Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today we're taking a close look at MSI's flagship GeForce RTX 2060 graphics card, the Gaming Z. In addition to the Gaming Z, they've also got the Ventus and Aero ITX. Uh, the Ventus is basically for everyone who couldn't pony up the extra dollar dues for the Gaming Z, and the Aero ITX is for those that couldn't afford the rest of their case. Since we do have a normal sized PC case and saving $30 doesn't really interest us, the Gaming Z it is. Now, as a premium RTX 2060 model, it comes in at $390 US, uh, the same price as the Gigabyte Gaming OC Pro that we used for testing in our initial RTX 2060 coverage. So at a little over 10% more uh, expensive than your run-of-the-mill RTX 2060, what is so special about the Gaming Z? Well, for one, it has a fat cooler. It's actually, well, it's probably best described as a stocky cooler. Yeah, this is without question the shortest high-end RTX 2060 graphics card out there, but at 52 millimeters wide, I, I wouldn't call it compact. It's a triple slot card, so yeah, it's stocky. It's very stocky. The Gaming Z measures just 247 millimeters long, and sure, that makes it a little longer than the Founder Edition model, but it is shorter than other custom AIB models, at least in this price range, such as Gigabyte's Gaming OC Pro, which does measure 280 millimeters long. Anyway, point is, it's not that long, but it is very wide. So, a bit of an interesting choice there from MSI, it has to be said. The card weighs in at 947 grams, which is quite heavy, and 588 grams of that weight is accounted for by the cooler. The black and grey fan shroud looks quite good. It's made from plastic, but still looks very good. And there's a few RGB highlights here and there for those of you who like a little bling. Embedded in the shroud are two 85mm Torx 3.0 fans, which remain inactive until the card or the GPU reaches and exceeds 60 degrees. Under the fan shroud, we find two aluminium fin stacks. One features a nickel plated copper base plate with two 6mm pipes, and then the second bank of fins features four heat pipes. Now, the cooler on this card is used solely to cool that TU106 GPU. The GDDR6 memory and VRAM feature their own heat spreaders. So this means the six one gigabyte GDDR6 modules are covered by a black aluminium heat spreader that weighs just 44 grams. Then we have an even smaller heat spreader over the VRM, it weighs just 27 grams. So it will be very interesting to see just how hot the VRM and GDDR6 memory get when gaming. Feeding power into the card is a single eight pin PCIe power connector, which is more than sufficient. And then on the back side of the card, we have a fancy looking back plate that stretches the entire length of the PCB and the back plate itself weighs just 80 grams. It's also insulated on the back side and doesn't feature any kind of thermal pads to remove heat that's built up on the rear side of the PCB. Around at the IO panel, there's three display ports and a single HDMI port. Pretty typical loadout for an RTX 2060 graphics card, it has to be said. Overall, the Gaming Z looks pretty good, but now it's time to find out if it really is any good. So let's throw it on the test system and find out. For testing, I don't want to go over a crazy amount of benchmarks. We don't do these for these AIB card reviews. In fact, I really barely benchmark them at all. Truth be told, they all deliver roughly the same performance out of the box. Almost always, the performance variance between the slowest and fastest models is less than 5%. However, where they can differ quite substantially is in the cooling performance and operating volume. So this is what I typically focus on with my reviews. Power consumption can also vary a bit depending on how aggressive the board partners are with their BIOS. Overclocking, I feel, is another metric that should really be taken with a grain of salt as it depends on how lucky you are with the silicon lottery. The best PCB design, VRM and cooling means absolutely nothing if you pair it with poor quality silicon. Anyway, let's get into it. And first up, I wanted to see how hot the Gaming Z was out of the box. So I fired up F1 2018 and run it on a loop for an hour. However, after about 20 minutes of the test, it seemed to have just about peaked hovering between 72 and 73 degrees. And then after the hour test, it held at 73 degrees. So a decent result with an ambient room temperature of 21 degrees. The temperature is all the more impressive given how quiet the card ran. Now my room has a noise floor of 38 decibels, so it's not super duper quiet. And apparently the Gaming Z was quieter than that as I was unable to measure a difference with it running at full steam. Admittedly, I don't have the best setup for accurately measuring these quieter graphics cards, but I can tell you it is very quiet. You might have noticed that in the F1 2018 footage that the core held steady at 1950 megahertz, and this was the typical operating frequency seen across a number of titles. 
That said, in other titles at times, it did spike up as high as 1980 MHz, and it did drop as low as 1870 MHz for brief periods of time, but for the most part, it did run at around 1950 MHz. As a side note, under the exact same conditions, Gigabyte's gaming OC Pro fluctuated between 1935 and 1950 MHz, so not quite as solid as the MSI model in that regard, but very close. As for the GDDR6 memory, I measured a peak surface temperature of 71 degrees using K-type thermocouples, while the VRM power stages peaked at 81 degrees. Again, this is with a 21 degree ambient air temperature. Both series of components are again cooled via very small heat spreaders, so it's unsurprising that temperatures are quite high, but they are still within spec. Now moving on to some gaming benchmarks, we see here that when playing Shadow of the Tomb Raider, it's basically on par with the Gigabyte model used for testing previously, and this made it 1 to 3 FPS faster than the Founders Edition model. We see much the same with Strange Brigade, we're really looking at results that are within the margin of error, though it is clear that these AIB models are a little bit faster than Nvidia's Founders Edition. Finally, we have Forza Horizon 4, and again, just a few frames in it. The MSI Gaming Z was solid, at least matching the Gigabyte Gaming OC Pro or beating it by a frame. Overclocking the MSI RTX 2060 Gaming Z using MSI Afterburner was a pretty standard affair. The card accepted plus 103 for the core and 800 for the memory, with the power and temp limits maxed out. This resulted in a typical operating frequency of 2040 MHz for the core and then 1950 MHz for the memory, though MSI report the DDR speed as 7801 MHz. Then we saw the GPU max out at 70 degrees, which was actually a 3 degree drop from the out of the box temp, as the fans are now spinning quite a bit faster to keep the temperatures under control. Overall, a solid overclock, and this is about the best you can expect to see from an RTX 2060. And just lastly, wrapping up the testing, I have some quick power consumption numbers. This is total system consumption, and we're testing with the standard GPU test rig, which uses a Core i9-1900K clocked at 5GHz with 32GB of DDR4 memory. The MSI Gaming Z consumes around 20 watts or less than the Gigabyte Gaming OC Pro model, which is a reasonable out-of-the-box power saving. For whatever reason, Gigabyte always seems to be very aggressive with their voltage profiles, and we're seeing that again here. Still pretty typical power consumption for the MSI model, so everything checks out here. Overall, the MSI RTX 2060 Gaming Z 6G, it's a nice graphics card, albeit a bit unusual in terms of dimensions. Uh, the short but fat profile, for lack of a better term, doesn't, doesn't really make a huge amount of sense, unless, of course, I'm missing something. There's some sort of scenario where it does make sense, but... Yeah, I don't think it makes sense for a lot of things. If you had a mini ITX system, for example, uh, which this probably wouldn't fit in it anyway because it is a triple slot card, you would just buy, well, you'd buy a mini ITX version, wouldn't you? That if you needed a really compact graphics card, you wouldn't, you wouldn't buy this. So for most situations, yeah, I don't see it being worthwhile. And most situations would see gamers using a standard ATX case or maybe even a micro ATX case. But even so for a micro ATX case, this isn't really a huge benefit over the other high-end RTX 2060 cards out there. So, bit peculiar. Point is, MSI has sacrificed a little bit of cooling performance here, and for the same money, ASUS and Gigabyte offer bigger models with longer heatsinks featuring triple fan arrangements. Another issue is the fact that the GDDR6 and VRM components aren't cooled by the main heatsink, as they are with the ASUS and Gigabyte models. So this will likely mean higher temperatures for these components, though, I will confirm that soon in my upcoming ASUS ROG Strix RTX 2060 OC gaming review. For now though, I think it's fair to say the Gaming Z certainly isn't bad. It is likely at a bit of a disadvantage when compared to the ASUS ROG Strix or Gigabyte Gaming Pro OC models, and I'm not sure what advantage, if any, the squatty format offers. Remember, whereas Gigabyte's card only occupies two slots, this shorter MSI model takes up three. So like I said, it's a bit of a fatty. Anyway, form factor aside, it did run relatively cool, and it was very quiet, which is most important. The card also looks great, and the colour neutral theme means it will suit any and all builds very well. Overall, a solid offering, but at $390 US, it may not prove to be the best choice. And that is going to do it for this one. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe for more content, and if you appreciate the work with Johan Box, then consider supporting us on Patreon. Don't know why I'm waving this around so much. Anyway, as usual, thanks for watching. I'm your host, Steve. See you again next time.